and burn. Hey everybody. So tonight I'm going to be discussing the second Traces of Death and... Oh shit, I can't remember if this came out in... 93 or 94, but no wait, it can't come out. Couldn't have come out in 94 because there's an ad in the middle of this that says, do you have a kick-ass death metal grindcore band and would you like to be a part of Traces of Death 3? If so, send us a demo tape, yada, 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 but make sure you have it in before September 1st, 1993. I'm pretty sure that's what it says. No, it says before September 94. So I don't know when this one came out. It came out after 1993, that much I can say for sure. But anyways, it doesn't matter. This is the one that introduced death and grindcore bands, death metal and grindcore bands into the mix. I did notice that a lot of the, the death metal that they used, it was either the same band or these bands were all trying to um, ape obituary sound somewhat. I noticed that it, it, it felt that way, at least as far as the vocals were concerned. But when we went into this back when I was in high school, I don't know, I kind of thought I knew what I was in for. And, of course, the narration, uh, again, this time the, the narrator's got a vocoder on, so he sounds more demonic. And he's still saying that stupid, you know, death is going to come for you, but will it come for you like this guy who didn't clear the subway train tracks in time and it cut him in half? Except there's more of like a on top of it because he's vocoded, so he's actually kind of demonic now. These movies are so clearly made for kids. And it says that, I think, at the start of this. It says something like, man needs to blah, 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 look out for his brief reality or his, his brief time on Earth before, you know, he's wiped out or whatever it is. And it uses the word his. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's because the target audience is like teenage males, like me and my friends when this came out. This one is so amped up with the use of the death metal and the grindcore. Um, it just, it makes it almost feel more like a skate video, which I know is kind of a weird thing to say, but it's true. This feels like it's got that same sort of skate video flow to it, even though this one amps up the violence of the first one considerably. And then when you toss in the fact that they're using death metal and grindcore bands, it does sort of make it way more evil. This one... This one, what does this one have? There's riots, there's police shootings, there's, of course, the obligatory autopsy morgue footage, you know, sort of like low-hanging fruit for these movies. There is a number of burns, explosions, of course, my God, the suicide, the one guy jumping from the building, you see his body, like, bounce off the ground, and it's kind of epic, I'm not going to lie, because that's where the Faces of Death movies always happen to fall short. And I think it wasn't so much because the faces of death movies couldn't find the footage. It's more that they just couldn't be bothered to find the footage because this type of footage was out there when the faces of death movies were getting up and running and they were being released throughout the, the late 70s and the early mid 80s, right? So the fact that it seems like the traces of death movies found like a plethora of this material so effortlessly, it does call into question even more so the authenticity of the Faces of Death movies. Like, why bother with reenactments when there's clearly so much footage kicking around of people who are actually getting mauled by bears and eaten by barracudas and, and set on fire and being executed and whatever else because the Traces of Death movies have very clearly showed us that that footage is everywhere. So why didn't the Faces of Death movies sort of go all in? Why did they bother reenacting aspects of it? I'm not 100% sure why, but I do have to say that, like I said in the last review that I did for the first one, I like how these movies feel cheap and slutty, and they do give a lot of weight, like a emotional weight, a filmmaking weight, to the Faces of Death movies, because the Faces of Death movies look like the work of you know, fucking Martin Scorsese or Tarantino or some, some shit when compared to these movies that are like, oh, fuck, it's like, it's like prostitution, practically. These are so whorish. These movies are just so... They just leave it all hanging out. It doesn't matter. Is this the one where it shows the kid or whatever? The 30-minute the sort of surgery thing where they pull the kid's face down at the end. They have to cut it all off, and then they have to sew it back up to dress some wound on the top. And I'm like, why is this so long? We don't really need that. It doesn't need to be that long. I don't get why these movies, including the Faces of Death movies, always sort of cheap out and go to the autopsy footage. It's like, again, these movies have proven that there's a fucking 
a, a limitless world filled with people being run over by tanks and people being gored by bulls and people being eaten by lions, and yet they always sort of reel it back in and just do the safe thing and show autopsy footage or morgue footage. The one thing I will say that so far the faces, traces of death movies haven't done, at least with the first two because I don't remember the third or fourth ones, um, there's not much in the ways of slaughterhouse footage, which was something that the Faces of Death movies fucking lived for. You know, they do the typical thing where Dr. Gross or whatever be eating a meal, a chicken, a rabbit, petting a rabbit, like, you know, I can't remember if that was the second or third one. And then it cuts to footage of rabbits being slaughtered in a rabbit slaughterhouse. And we're all supposed to be like, whoa, he was just petting one. This is fucking crazy. It's not crazy. It's cringy. But yeah. So I, I don't know why these movies always go back to the autopsy thing. I know it's easy, but then when you think about uh, the act of scene through one's own eyes, the, the, the documentary that, Jesus Christ, I can't remember the name of the guy that did the documentary way back when. I saw it in some film elective I took a billion years ago. It's a cool movie, but it's an autopsy. There, done. We don't need an autopsy to show up in all of these movies, but I do have a feeling that when they go and get stuff and they can't seem to figure out what to put for a minute, they're going to go... More autopsy footage because it's gross. Low hanging fruit gross, but nevertheless gross. Gross all the same. What else did I want to say? I'm so professional. Um, oh yeah, that's right. The, the, I loved, again, I think I said this already at the start, but I absolutely loved the ad for the band. Does your band kick ass? Are you death metal or grindcore? Do you want to be in the third Traces of Death movie? And I'm like, wow, this is really rad. If I was in a band at that point, that would have been amazing. And I know that Relapse, Relapse Records would release the soundtrack for Traces of Death 3 back in the 90s. That was amazing. Like, Relapse is like the record label. Like, Pig Destroyer's on there, the Agoraphobic's on there, Beanum's on there, fucking Blood Duster's on there, Kristen Mistress. I don't know if they're still on there anymore, but they were on there. And I mean, I don't even know where to, but Nozum was on Relapse. I mean, fuck, it just doesn't stop. Relapse kicks ass. So much ass. So for them to put out the, the soundtrack for the third one, they just fucking walk off. And if I'm not mistaken too, the guy behind the production aspect of these movies, he would go on to form Brain Damage films for anybody that knows them. And Brain Damage would put out the box set of these later on, I think in the early 2000s. They would be released via Brain Damage Films for anybody that knows Brain Damage. I thought that was kind of cool. What else did I want to say? Um, where was the... Oh, yes, that's right. The, the super robot that I completely forgot existed. The, it was called Robosaurus or some shit. The one that always used to come to Toronto during the, like, the monster truck shows. It would like pick a car up and rip it in half and it would shoot lasers out of its eyes. I completely forgot those things existed until a couple hours ago when I was watching this movie in order to do this video. And I was like, holy shit, I'm fucking 12 years old again. But yeah, so in this, uh, one of those like Robosaurus sort of car eating robots that were big at this point in the 90s, um, fucks up and fires a rod right through one of the performers who were supposed to be like an alien that was attacking the robot. Well, the, the robot misfired and it fired a rod like right through the guy. Didn't see that coming. Completely forgot about those robots. Um, yeah, I mean, I also have to say, too, the other thing, this one seems to have better production values. I found that with a lot of the footage in the first one, it could get a little grainy, a little shifty, a little shaky, and it wasn't so much so that they could hide the fact that maybe it wasn't real. It was just that whoever legitimately was there to shoot the footage got scared or was horrified or whatever it was, and they were kind of shaky. But with this one, I found that, again, the production value was much higher, the footage was a lot cleaner, and with the introduction of the band's thing tossing in the skate video vibe, this one has a better flow. This one comes and goes. Still has that stupid ass, we don't use reenactments at the start, which is a clear fucking dig at Faces of Death. But Faces of Death eclipses these movies by leaps and bounds as far as their sense of professionalism are concerned. It's like Faces of Death, the people that were, who the production company behind Faces of Death were actually setting out and hoping to make like a real film of some kind. And these, these are just like a fucking... These are porn, basically. It's like I said in the first video. These are like Girls Gone Wild of the, the real death movies. And I think that was everything that I wanted to say about this. Yeah, that, that's it. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for oh, a little over 10 minutes again while I discussed the second installment in the somewhat long-running Traces of Death series. Jesus, Traces of Death. Death. Fucking can't even talk. The Traces of Death. 
Death series. Like always, if you like this review or you like this movie way more than the first one, don't forget to go and do something nice for somebody because it's easy, it's quick, and it makes the world a better place. It's really easy. Just hold the door. Give a dollar to charity or some shit. But please, most importantly, don't forget that you are really important and you're amazing. And whatever it is you're going through, don't forget that it's going to change. Things are going to turn around. And don't give up. That's it. Have a good night.